Alright everyone, um, it's time to get set up to do the detail on the GT3. I've been, been waiting a while to do this. I actually got the car, what, uh, three weeks, three and a half weeks ago now? And uh, my wife keeps planning stuff on the weekend, so I haven't been able to, to spend the time. I figured it'll take, you know, a day and a half or so uh, to get the car, you know, completely dialed in. Uh, so what I thought I'd do is I'd make a video series of just step by step how I do it. Now I'm not a pro, I'm not an expert, I'm just a forum junkie. So, you know, if I'm doing something wrong, it, there's nothing I can say other than this is, this is the way I do it. And uh, I know that uh, not everybody's big of a geek, as, as big of a geek as I am. So I figured I'd spend, you know, a couple extra hours and throw together a, sort of a video series of my step-by-step -step process and how I correct paint. Uh, the car's actually in decent shape. Um, I'm surprised the factory swapped some wax on it and put some crap on the tires. And, uh, not the factory, but the Porsche dealership. Uh, normally I don't let the dealership touch my car, but my car wasn't ordered. Someone, uh, long story short, someone fell, uh, fell into hard times and had to walk away from the order. So I was able to come in and scoop up basically the exact build I wanted. So I didn't have the opportunity to tell them don't touch the car. Plus the car has the, the, the new motor, so who knows how many times it's been washed and it was sitting at port or when it was sitting at the facility in Atlanta getting, getting, uh, getting the new motor put in. So um, the only part of the car that, that, that needs some real compounding, some real work is the, is the trunk. Uh, so the, the rear area where the, the wing is, uh, I'm going to attempt to remove, remove the wing. It looks like it's just four bolts. So I'm going to take that off today and uh, maybe tomorrow. Um, but uh, uh, there's a few holograms and some wet sanding marks. It's weird because not, none of the rest of the car has any detail imperfections at all. The rest is pretty good. So all I'm going to do is jewel that, just do a finishing polish and put some, put some wax on it. So the, the, tr the, the trunk area uh, where the wing is, it's the only, you know, I guess it's not really the trunk, but the, the engine bay area, uh, the engine lid um, needs, needs a little bit of work. So I'll show you how, how, that, how I do that today. So when we start, uh, I always, uh, first step is you need to get the junk off a car, you know, get the paint prepped. And uh, step one is to uh, wash the car. Um, so why not use this as a quick step to a quick, you know, make it a little quicker, get knock out two birds with one stone, get the car clean, get the bugs, dirt off the car, but also get the initial sort of stripping the, the wax. The auto scrub or the, the clay will take off most of the, most of the wax, uh, but why not get as much off the car as you can? All right, it's time for step one. Uh, step one is to decontaminate the paint. So this is the process of washing the car um, um, using a Iron Al or Iron X uh, solution chemical to get the iron rail dust, the iron out of the paint. Uh, and then the third is to uh, probably want to auto scrub the car, either auto scrub or clay bar the car with a, with a detail spray. Uh, so. Uh, that process um, and then, then wash the car again and, and then uh, start polishing it. So the decontamination step, I always start with, uh, with like heavy uh, citrus base or heavier um, uh, soap car shampoo. Uh, a forum member of Six Feet Online turned me on to this uh, chemical guy's citrus wash. Uh, it's a citrus base, uh, a little bit heftier uh, solution. Uh, I find that it works really well at getting off uh, stuff. Uh, bugs seem to just fall off the paint and fall off the car. And um, I mix this, I do a 50 50 solution in my foam cannon with the Adams All Purpose Cleaner uh, and this. Uh, and I figured I'd show you sort of how I do this. Uh, the foam cannon is an MTM foam cannon with uh, these are from Pressure Washer Direct. I think they're like general purpose quick necks. Uh, if you guys follow me, you've well, we've seen the, the videos where I, I'm a big quick connects junkie. I think that uh, they say it all the time. And just make it nice and clean where you're not having to screw the, 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 the foam cannon on every time you want to use it. So MTM is really kind of cheap. It's just a basic bottle. You could use pretty much any normal threaded bottle. I um, use the ones that they, they provide. Uh, you always use the Adams Funnel. Uh, Adams Funnel fits pretty much on all the bottles, the Grio stuff, the Adams stuff, uh, all the Adams stuff, and um, uh, pretty much uh, it doesn't fit so well in the Cranzel spray bottles. I don't really use those very much. I just don't like them. My girlfriend loves those things, but I just don't, don't like how they work. 
So I, there's no science to this. Just work some of this stuff in there. There we go. I guess I'm probably putting said this isn't exactly scientific. Just put some in there. And then what I'll do is walk over to the sink and, and fill it up. Uh, so just fill it up slowly. One, but one little tip, uh, I'm sure you can figure this out on your own, but uh, I just fill it up with a real slow stream of water. Otherwise, uh, I think it suds up and you only get this much water in it then. So, and you're always constantly going back trying to fill it up. So let the water go through the funnel, but, but do a nice little slight, steady stream. That way you won't you won't bubble it up. You can actually get this thing filled with water. Uh, this this foam can will actually what I'll do is because I can't use this stuff again on the, after I've done the decontamination or after I've done the you know, clean the car. Um, so what I'll what I usually do is um, you'll probably use about half of this to, to to do the initial wash, and then after polishing uh, I'll use the other half uh, and, uh, and and then wash the bottle out and go back to normal. So for what I'm doing on all the washes. So we fill this up. We'll be back in a minute. So filled up. Not very scientific. Got some water. Fill up to the top. And then I'll wait for the suds because they gotta go out and actually spray out the car. I'm not gonna clean the wheels today. Uh, I always wait and do that after I do the polishing step. After I do the sort of to get the oils off the car. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll just spray off the wheels today, and then um, and then finish. stuff is running off the car, hopefully pulling most of the dirt off, all the soap is. A little trick I learned, I'm sure many of you have followed my journals or watched my videos, this is something I learned from Adam's videos, actually put the soap on the pad. I don't normally use this much soap, but since I'm trying to decontaminate the paint, I use a little extra, a little more than normal. 
when you put it on the pad, it keeps it from shooting out of the bucket. And there's not any rocket science to this. Just fill up the two buckets. Buckets. The buckets are grit guard buckets. Um, they have a grit guard insert, and then there's a little connection piece, so they, you know, they just work together. Pretty expensive option, but I like them. Um, Adams has them too. Uh, the hose, if you guys have seen my other videos, I spent a lot of money on a hose. It took me a long time to find one I really like. This is Adams was selling this three quarter inch uh, rubber Goodyear hose for a while. Um, it works really well. The problem is it's a couple hundred bucks. Um, and then I've got a, a DRAM, a Quick Connect, an Ely um, spray nozzle. It's okay. I've never really found a spray nozzle that I'm in love with. I, I like the fire hose ones, but then they're hard to they're hard to use if you're washing the wheels. Um, this one has a quick that you can turn off and on. You know, if you're not familiar with the two bucket system, use one bucket to win, rinse your rag and one bucket for one bucket for, for new soap. You know, the whole idea is to try to keep as much, try to keep as much of the sand and stuff. Especially in Florida, we have a lot of sand. We don't have to deal with you know, the salt and things like that. But um, you need to really be mindful of sand because it'll really, it'll really tear up the paint. And this this system works really well. I'll sort of show you how I do it. I don't use Adams all-purpose cleaner in here. Just throw some chemical guys. So call it a day. Running out of daylight here. We've been soaked for a while. I think that washing is probably one of the most important things when maintaining a car. Obviously, start at the top. And, you know, I know most of you guys know this if you're watching a detailed video, but there's no point to really grinding the, and just really just sort of letting the pad do its own, do its do, do the job. And you know, I don't really see any need to scrub. If there is anything on the car, or left over bugs or anything, I can get those off with detail spray. At least I know there won't be sand or dirt on the car when I'm dragging across the paint. I'll try to do, you know, I'll do like a panel or two at a time. The car is actually pretty clean. Rinse in the clean bucket. Back in the suds. But I did want to decon it before, obviously, before polishing. Whatever they put on the car, of course, isn't too bad. That's why I haven't seen the need to rush into getting this, getting this done. Immediately, right the second. I already did the windows, um, so I did the windows a couple weeks ago. Um, I didn't do a video of it, sorry. I do have another video from my Carrera S, I think. Yeah, but, uh, where I did the windows. Really, I guess everybody's wiping the wing off. The wing has the worst, worst of the big hologram, and lots of looks like wet sand scratches. It just had to have come from the factory because if the dealership did it, they would be all over the car, I would guess. Unless there's just a different, unless the lid is painted it, I don't know. I would think they'd paint the whole thing at the same time to get a good, good match. But again, with this, just do one panel at a time, always start at the top, work your way down. Pretty simple process. A lot of times, especially on the front bumper, I'll follow up with my hand, see if there's any bugs or anything. But again, I don't think it does any good to scrub the daylights out of the paint. Just, you'd be better off getting it off, getting anything that's stuck on there after the fact. And there's no sense of grinding in sand and dirt. If you want to really be mindful of pushing using heavy pressure, especially in the front bumper if you have a tendency to want to do that because there's so many bugs. Especially in Florida. Bug crazy. But you can I'd urge you to get it off after. Even then, don't 
start grinding into the paint. If you treated it and kept it properly clean, stuff should come right off. Now, to the bottom. When I do the when I do the side panels, I always do um, you know one one section. I'll tell you. So I'm doing here, I always do one, and this isn't rocket science. Dragging down, don't come up, and then flip it. And do one section and rinse. Like I said, my car's not very dirty right now. Just to be safe. Actually, when, when I'm washing a car anyway, this is the quickest step. Is actually washing off the car. It's all the prep work. It takes a long time. Getting the pressure washer out, getting the buckets ready. And then the drying actually takes me longer than wash itself. This, of course, is always the dirtiest part of the car. It takes me a couple of, this is not bad today, it takes a couple of passes with the sponge. I'm always checking the sponge too to make sure I didn't pick up anything that's dragging across the paint. GT3 bad, but I think I'd love a clean rear bumper more. <laughs> we'll see how long. I'm trying really hard to make sure I keep this thing on. I'll take the plate off too. But trying to leave the, leave the badges on because it looks pretty good with them, but the detail freak in me wants to, wants to not have. It's just more work. I guess if I am a detail freak, I should be okay with leaving them on, spending the extra time. But I don't know. It's weird. Something about me wants to just ditch them. Like I said, I'll, I'll clean the wheels after. There's no sense in getting them all cleaned up and then having to clean them again. Um, the carbon ceramics, there really isn't much to do. I, I, probably, I probably won't do the wheels this week. We'll see how much time. Takes me to get this thing corrected. I mean, I can't take the wheels off because I don't have a center lock tool, nor the cojones to try to get them off the car. Certainly, they're not strong enough, but I don't know. I, and my buddies was telling me, you've got to really commit to getting those things off. I don't know if I'm willing to do that. So that's that's rinsed, done. Um, now let's uh, I'm gonna spray the thing off and get the iron out all in. So I always rinse it with a pressure washer, and then for this application, I I'll, I'll uh, just sort of blow off heavy water, just so I'm sure that the iron out can really get a good uh, really connects with the paint. So I'll show you how to do that real quick. The pressure washer set is really low setting. Well, it go, but I don't see the need to have massive pressure. This step, I really don't need to get all the soap. It really doesn't matter. I just want to get most of it off. Just in preparation for the, for the decon, for the iron out.
I'm not going to do a really good job. I just want to get like heavy stuff off the car. I could probably just sheet some water on it, but um, I'll blow it off real quick. Then we're going to we'll leave it pretty much wet, and uh, and then we're going to do the, the iron out. This is a steel PG55. I love this thing. Works great. Never have to do anything to it. There's no maintenance. I'm not going to polish the lights, <clears throat> unless you're ready to remove the UV coat. 